I'm Neil Brownsword. I'm an artist, researcher and professor of ceramics at Staffordshire University. The work I create is working with ceramics, but working with an expanded idea of what ceramics is. So beyond its basic materiality, I look at the kind of geological aspects of ceramics, social aspects of ceramics, and more importantly, my relationship of working with the ceramic industry, which is uh, quite dear to me. I, I started off working as an apprentice at the age of 16 at the Wedgwood factory. So those experiences of knowledge, acquisition, skill, keep on getting re regurgitated through the work I create. I've been working with the British Ceramics Biennial since its inception in 2008 and delivering projects throughout every biennial. It's been quite important for me to bring an international perspective to different um, years of the BCB, but this time round it's been really interesting to revisit the locality of Stoke-on-Trent and its histories and fascinating for me to apply my knowledge full circle really back to working with Johnson Tiles. So this project um, came up alongside my solo exhibition which is at the Brampton Museum but it allowed me to apply ideas which were being developed for that exhibition into a series of tiles So the tiles developed out of an existing project with the BCB, which is called Obsolescence and Renewal, which is on now currently at the Brampton Museum in Newcastle on the Lyme. And really what it was trying to do was to celebrate Newcastle on the Lyme's contribution to ceramic culture and industry. There are some quite important um, processes histories which get overlooked in the grand scheme of the history of ceramics in Stoke-on-Trent. But the emergence of things like slip casting and early porcelain developments are all specific to Newcastle under Lyme. So I was working with the museum and curating objects from their collections which I guess would celebrate that marginalised history because not a great deal of people know about those objects because some of them only exist as archaeology. You know, the porcelain pieces didn't really evolve into finished objects. They were still proto-porcelain. So at the Brampton Museum, there is a collection of early proto-porcelains which were not perfected, which only exist as archaeology but they're quite important in the technological development of uh, porcelain production in North Staffordshire. There are examples of early underglaze print, uh, painting on some of these objects, but also earlier in the late 1600s, there were two Dutch silversmiths who came over to Bradwell Woods near to the factory and established a small manufactory using the local clays there but what they were doing was imitating southern Chinese wares using these red malls, um, which were for an elite market during that period. But I find that fascinating as a history because I'm, my parents are from Bradwell. I grew up in the region, but didn't really know about that history until much later. So I guess there's lots of different connections through this project I've been able to tap into. But also, you know, clay is this wonderful material to copy anything. You know, it can imitate silverware. Historically, it's imitated basketware. It's what we call a skeomorphic material. So I was really interested in that process of turning an object back into an image and vice versa. So this, this project has really got me back in touch with my graphic sensibilities which I've not really 
um, worked with since I was an apprentice at Wedgwood. But I've been applying them to print. I've also been taking some of the imagery into full scale three meter tapestries. So it's this transition uh, from commodities which were copied here in North Staffordshire, whose histories go back to copying objects which traveled through the Silk Road, you know, from China into the Middle East and into Europe. So it's really celebrating and citing that history of cultural influence because what we see as British ceramics is totally founded upon cultural influence if we kind of look back at those histories. So the idea behind the tiles was really looking at the history of place and the cultural identity of North Staffordshire and the influences which fed into the emergence of industry. And looking back, um, cultural influence is quite important. The reason why industry grew here was directly influenced by the rise of tea drinking in the mid 1600s which spurred a wave of innovation and material exploration. It also led to the borrowing of cultural imagery, which I'm quite fascinated by, because in the late 1600s, there's very few people who visited places like China um, to know about their culture, their kind of symbolism, what they use within their uh, cultural artifacts. So I was really interested in this idea of the copy and the slip within the copy. So this is what spurred a series of ideas through playing around with different digital technologies where I was deliberately using lo-fi methods of digital scanning to remove historical images from objects which I'd collected from um, eBay and other um, auction houses. So this process of digitally removing the surface of an object, but that process then induces a glitch, an error. So I was quite interested in, um, you know, these, these images being distorted. Because when you look back at the history of ceramics here in North Staffordshire, sometimes there isn't the technology to perfect the copy. So we're working with materials, what were there at the time, also limitations of skill. And, uh, you know, early 1700s, we are making our own version of Chinese wares, tea wares, such as the teapot, which is alien to Britain at that time. But there's a demand for those implements to support tea drinking, the fashion for tea drinking. So it's an opportunity for me to mine my own cultural history and looking at processes of, 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 of the copy from, a, like say, a cultural, social and technological perspective. It was great for me to revisit the Johnson factory and also see how technology has streamlined production and see how fast production is these days. So the images are fully automated, they're not a decal which is applied after firing. Um, so it was fascinating for me to see how technology has evolved. For the project, I initially developed a body of ideas, quite an expansive body of ideas, which I was then able to discuss with Claire, uh, uh, about appropriateness for the project and also relationships. Um, so I think I must have generated about 120 ideas from which we had to pick seven um, designs for the tiles. And initially we trialled some of the tiles out on the factory just to see how the colour relationships would work with the existing colour wheel. So it was a process of compromise because some of the colours I was using were 
I guess reds, yellows, quite intense colours in the original artwork and it was just seeing how the process of manufacture would adapt those in initial ideas. So I guess it was working with the process and seeing what the end results would be and um, you know it's a process of compromise and possibilities and limitations they all get kind of put in the mix and yeah I think they worked with the, the tiles what were selected some of the colors were kind of subdued more but I think they work aesthetically as, a, as an outcome So working with Mick, it was great to have an expert at hand who knew the colour wheel inside out and knew the possibilities and limitations of working with some of my ideas in relation to that colour scheme. So I sat with him and we were able to you know, enhance certain colours or knock back certain colours so we would get this kind of healthy compromise which didn't impinge on the integrity of the ideas. So I think there were some problems um, technically in terms of getting some solid colours but I think we've, we've managed to resolve those um, by that working uh, relationship. Um, I, I was able to settle on some other ideas which may not have been as problematic for production. So it was great to kind of I suppose work as a team on the project really and get um, expert advice who really knew the materials and processes inside out. I guess with every British ceramic biennial output for me it's a bit like a sketchbook because what it does is push me into new territory and new ways of working which constantly refresh my approach to researching. But this is one of the first times I've really applied the research to an outcome as such. It's a, a print or a tapestry or an object. So it's quite interesting for me to revisit this idea of um, you know, gallery-based objects again. Um, so I think it's excited me. It's made me think about new possibilities which I can kind of explore and apply in the future. But I think this idea of working with industry again is something I've always thought about doing because my history of like being trained in industry but then going off on all these tangents but then coming back to it, um, I can apply all those other experiences of experimentation and thinking, of, thinking about um, how it could work in a mainstream situation as a commodity again. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, it's been great for me to work in this way really. Working with Johnson's been a fantastic opportunity. It's made an, a connection for the university, which hopefully we can get students involved in future projects. But I would love to work with the company again, maybe on some other briefs or other projects. And like I say, this idea of mass production is something which I think is, is really interesting for me to reapply, I guess, some off the wall ideas back into a situation where people can have something which is different again. I'm currently uh, in the process of preparing uh, for a visit to China, to Jingjizhen which is one of the world's capitals of ceramics, but again, has a, a kind of parallel history to Stoke-on-Trent. You know, the concentration of areas working with one material commodity and its output in terms of kind of global output is quite similar. Uh, and also the idea of tradition, uh, fascinated by, you know, obviously my own tradition here in Stoke-on-Trent and North Staffordshire, but also looking at uh, Chinese tradition, which goes back so much further than the 300 years here in North Staffordshire. Um, also fascinated about the potential of collaboration with the university there 
and other projects which may arise from the visit. But again, I think ceramics is this wonderful material which connects people, doesn't it? Um, you know, through the commodities we drink from and eat from every day. Um, and it's just, I guess, immersing myself back into that world and that culture and the people who make these objects. I think, you know, the knowledge base of people is a constant point of fascination for me. Um, so it will hopefully lead to some new ideas.